Leonardo da Vinci is widely regarded as one of the smartest persons in human history. His influence breaches time and space, and we can easily see many of his ideas and inventions in use today. Despite being long gone, his legacy still remains, and a lot of people appreciate him and his extraordinary influence that he had over our society. The date of birth for Leonardo da Vinci was 15th of April, 1452. He was born in the city of Vinci. An important thing to note is that he was the son of a lawyer, but he was not the legitimate son, something that did haunt him during his entire life. Other sources say that he was born in Anciano, which was a county hamlet. What we know for sure is that both of his parents married separately a year after he was born. Aside from that, we don't know a lot of information about Leonardo da Vinci's childhood. Aside from the fact that until 1457, he was still living in the household of his grandfather, most likely caring for his mother. Even if his family history was not distinguished or anything like that, Leonardo got informal basic education in math reading and writing. That's mostly because his artistic talents were recognized early on during his life. During the mid-1460s, he moved to Florence, which was a major place for Christian culture at that time. He became a studio boy for Andrea del Verrocchio, who was a very reputable sculptor and painter at that time. This was around the time when Donatello died. Leonardo da Vinci became an apprentice when he was 17 and stayed as an apprentice for more than seven years. He did work for a lot of painters like Lorenzo di Credi, Botticelli, Ghirlandaio, and others. This was great for Leonardo because he had a lot of exposure to technical skills and theoretical training. Plus, since most of the Verrocchio's work was done by his assistants, Leonardo da Vinci did contribute to the baptism of Christ. He actually painted a young angel that was holding the robe of Jesus. He also did some local work too, work that eventually ended up at the Duke of Milan. Del Verrocchio was seemingly very impressed with the talent of Leonardo, that he said he would not pick up a paintbrush again and have him do the work. Leonardo did end up going away from the studio and tried to focus on his independent work. When he was 20, Leonardo was already a master in the Guild of St. Luke. However, his first real work that was dated and attributed to him was a pen and ink drawing of the Arno Valley from 1473. Then he also worked on other commissioned pieces, like an altarpiece at the Chapel of St. Bernard. In 1480, he was already living with the Medici, and he worked in the Piazza San Marco in Florence on a variety of different pieces. In 1481, he was tasked by the Argentinian monks from the San Donato to paint the Adoration of the Magi. However, Leonardo ended up abandoning this commission and didn't end up completing anything there. Leonardo da Vinci is widely known for his artistic abilities. With that being said, only a few dozen pieces are actually attributed to him. One of them is Mona Lisa, but at the same time, there's also the Last Supper and the Vitruvian Man. The latter one was drawn in 1490, and it depicts a nude male that shows the proportion and symmetry in the case of men. He was trying to relate the man to our natural world, which he did flawlessly with this spectacular piece. Another one of his most important pieces was The Last Supper. This was commissioned by the Duke of Milan in 1495. The masterpiece was an extraordinary, rather challenging project, but one that took three years to complete. It showcases the drama from that moment when some of the apostles were going to betray him. 
everything from the body language to facial expressions are extremely well done. And it's just a sign of an amazing composition brought to life in a flawless manner and with a lot of incredible detail. Then there's Mona Lisa. This painting is by far the most popular one that he made. It's a privately commissioned work, which is widely known for the enigmatic smile of that woman. He used his own sfumato technique in order to deliver an incredible visual appeal. It's said that the image is a picture of Lisa del Giocondo, the wife of a silk merchant from Florentine. It's really hard to say which is the right answer, although the original name of the painting, Gioconda, certainly supports that theory. However, that family didn't receive the painting, so it's uncertain if they received a commission for it or not. Battle of Anghiari is another work created by da Vinci. This was a mural for the council hall for the Palazzo Vecchio. The thing to note here is that this was supposed to be twice as large when compared to the Last Supper. With that in mind, he did abandon the project after two years. The reason was easy to understand. It started to deteriorate even before he finished it. Another important aspect of Leonardo da Vinci is definitely his unique set of inventions. At first, Lorenzo de Medici commissioned him to create a silver lyre as a peace gesture. From that, Leonardo started to focus more and more on inventing all kinds of stuff. With that in mind, he started sketching a war chariot, an armored tank, a huge crossbow, and other ideas that would work very well in the case of a war. With that in mind, de Medici was impressed and he brought Leonardo da Vinci to Milan for around 17 years. This is also the time when Leonardo did the Last Supper. He also supported Leonardo with his unique inventions. Leonardo da Vinci was obsessed with the idea of flying, and he created a lot of prototypes and sketches for flying machines. He even wrote the Codex on the Flight of Birds in 1505, and he worked very hard to invent items in this field. He was one of the people that didn't really see any divide between art and science. Instead, he saw them as two disciplines that were intertwined instead of being separate. In fact, he was confident that working in science would also make him a great artist. Leonardo worked as a military engineer for Cesar Borgia for two years, and he also designed plans to divert the Arno River from Pisa too. He was very creative and always created a variety of devices and plans to bring amazing ideas to life. Leonardo was interested in the human anatomy ever since the 1480s, and he dissected animal and human bodies. He has multiple drawings of a fetus, sex organs, the human heart, and muscular structures as well. These are actually one of the first out there that were extremely detailed and quite accurate. Aside from that, Leonardo da Vinci also studied zoology, geology, botany, physics, aeronautics, and hydraulics. You can check many of his observations on paper, which covered many of these topics. Leonardo da Vinci is also known for his many great sculptures. Some of the main ones are 16-foot-tall equestrian statue of Lodovico Sforza's father, made out of bronze. This project took around a dozen years to complete, mostly due to Leonardo's many commitments at that time. On top of that, he also created a grand equestrian statue for Gian Giacomo Trovolzio as well, but this one was never finished. Leonardo da Vinci eventually came to Milan in 1506 with the idea of working for the French rulers that took the city and forced him to go away. He worked for many different art commissions in the city, but eventually he moved to Rome in 1513 with Melzi, Salai, and two other assistants. Giuliano de' Medici offered da Vinci a salary and some rooms in the Vatican as his residence. However, he didn't offer him a lot of work. 
which is why Leonardo da Vinci spent this time on scientific exploration and studying mathematics. He did receive the title of premier painter and engineer and architect to the king. It's unknown how exactly Leonardo da Vinci died, but we do know the date, May 2nd, 1519, when he was 67. Some say that he died of a stroke, but that's unclear. With that in mind, we do know that he worked on his studies until he died. And Melzi, his assistant, became the executor and heir for his estate. Leonardo da Vinci is one of the most revered artists and inventors in human history for a reason. He was very curious and he always wanted to uncover new things and ideas. He pushed the boundaries in many fields and he was also a great inventor. His work impresses people even today because he spent a lot of time bringing every piece close to perfection. Even as a scientist, he spent years studying physics and the human body, offering us some of the most detailed depictions everyone created at that time. He continues to impress us even these days with his amazing forward-thinking ideas and work.